It is Saturday afternoon here at Gen Con. I am sitting here at the Renegade Game Studio booth, and I'm th so thankful I'm sitting. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> and Danny is going to talk with me. Usually I talk to Sarah, and I joke around with Sarah, and we always make some librarian reference about her mom. <laughs> but we're going to talk about, like, there's like one game that came out from you guys here. Um, one times ten. Yes. Yeah, like I joke on the show, I say, hey, today ends in a Y. There's a new game coming from Renegade Game Studios. <laughs> so let's do a rundown. There are some very, very cool things. Uh, I've shared the news on just about all of these. Yeah. But we're going to talk kind of quickly because there's so much right, right, right. about each of these new titles. So what do you want to kick off with, Darcy? Oh, man. Okay, the right, game Danny, I... Danny, why did I call you Darcy? Duh. That's okay. Um, the game I'm most excited about is Spell Smashers. This is an October release. It is word spelling, monster fighting, uh, fantasy game. Yes. Okay. So we are going to be spelling words which have attack values that we're going to use to fight monsters. When we kill monsters, we get their bodies as trophies that are letters that we have in our arsenal for the rest of the game. Unfortunately, I would be terrible at this game because I have such a limited vocabulary. That's fine. Mm, game dice. Mm. I am not ashamed of spelling up as my spell. <laughs> but I understand uh, if I if I remember correctly, I believe some of like the, because it's like little chunks of words, right? It's not necessarily just single letters that are are in, or is it just oh. single letters? Like uh, the tiles that you have to put you words have together from. Consonants and vowel cards. There when you go. attack monsters, they're going to smack you back. You're going to draw a wound card. The wound cards are awesome because they have difficult combinations of letters, like ing, ed. Sure. That right. will make your words longer and better, but are really annoying to spell with. Here's an X. Knock yourself out. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And that is uh, arriving in October. It's here now. Yeah. We have a few copies left. I was going to say, I only see a few left. Yeah, yeah, that's all we have, so it's going to sell out. But otherwise, October. Sweet. Yeah. Moving right along. Next one. <laughs> Gunky Mono is... And it uh, has the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence, it folks. It does. Yeah, this just released. Actually, it's not released in stores yet. That'll be in September. But this is a re-skin, re-theming of Heartland. Okay. which was an older game about farming. Uh, Tom loved it, so he just got his copy, but he already told us it had a seal of excellence because it's so good. Yeah, actually, that's not a real seal. It looks like you guys just drew that and stuck that. I'm teasing. It's the real seal. <laughs> In fact, Tom probably walked over with one and went mm -hmm, personally one. put it on that. <laughs> So Gunkimono is a tile lane uh, abstract game. It's very cutthroat. Nice. It's all about screwing over your neighbor. So we're going to be laying down tiles and choosing whether to score victory points or honor points. If we get honor points in each different color, then we have strongholds which lock in your little territory. And then of course, once you own something, uh, everyone else wants to diminish it and reduce your points. So yeah, very brutal. I'm all about diminishing my opponents. That's, that's how I live life. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. So this will release September. September 19. Okay. Yeah. Moving right along. The hits keep coming, folks, I'm telling you. <laughs> Windake is another heavier game. It's actually the heaviest game we have in our catalog. Wow. Heavier than Altiplano. Yeah? So this is an action selection game with various elements. So there's set collection, resource management, upgrading tiles, uh, random... Uh, rearranging of your actions. Okay. There's a lot going on, but it's amazing. Uh, I lose track of time when I play this game. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it seems to have a Native American theme yeah. to it. Yeah, it's uh, set in the Great Lakes region, so it involves all of the tribes in that area. Um, but the, the designer was very thoughtful. There's a whole historical booklet in the rule book that talks oh, about his nice. inspirations, the history. Yeah. I love when I get to see that kind of stuff. Uh, n not to mention another company out there, but. <laughs> North Star, or, uh, yeah, North Star Games just released Warsaw, which is basically an English version of Capital, mm -hmm. and you're building districts in Warsaw, so they have like historical famous buildings, and in the rule book, there's a breakdown talking about each of the buildings, and I love when that extra mile is performed by a company because yeah. I love history. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we cool. like to put I, in I like effort. Um, okay, so there's a new expansion for Clank, and Clank. Most people who watch my show never really rarely see Clank behind me because it has to stay in my car. Because <laughs> you play it so often. Uh, my nephew and his friends are part of the gang, so mm -hmm. we play a lot of the games together. 
and sometimes there are games that may not necessarily be something they think they want to play. They like it afterwards, but it doesn't grab them. And I'll say, all right, we'll play XYZ, and then I'll bust out Clank. And they're like, okay. I'm serious, it's that good. I, I love it. <laughs> That's so good. there's a new expansion. Yes, we just announced this new expansion. It's called Clank Expeditions Gold and Silk. So this is Gold and Silk. Expeditions is a new line of expansions that we're making. Okay. They're just map packs. So this is one map double-sided that introduces a new theme. So we've got gold and a dwarven mine. On the opposite side, we have silk. It's a spider's web. Very ah. creepy crawly. We also have new meeples. So we got the new boss spider queen, and we got dwarven meeples. And... Uh, <laughs> and we got new cards and tokens that are thematic. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so, and then you have like a bigger expansion for Clank in Space! Yeah, so this is uh, similar to the Mummy and Sunken Treasures for regular Clank, where it has more maps, more cards, and whatnot. It's just a bigger expansion. Adds new mechanics. So this one, Lord Eraticus, the evil cyborg, has schemes now. Yeah, we hate him. Uh, the black not fun to us either, so... We, no, it's fair. mutual. Um, the black cubes now that you draw, you're going to be placing them on scheme cards, which have uh, three phases. If you complete all three phases, bad things happen, and a new permanent effect is introduced to your game. So, it gives them an effect, which I find very interesting. And it's a, just a global effect that stays in place? It's not legacy. It's just for your, your game. Oh, it's an ongoing oh yeah, effect. right. For that game, it's just... Mm -hmm. But it's a global effect during that game. Yep. Then. Yeah, that's yep. sweet. Yeah. Very nice. It should make your games a lot more exciting. Okay, our last board game is Arboretum, which is a new version of the old Z-Man game. All right? So this is by Dan Kassar. We redid the artwork with uh, Beth Sobel, who's amazing. Um, did if Beth Sobel do T-Dragon Society? No, she did Wonderland. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because um, I know I recognize the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is an abstract card game. Uh, tableau building set collection some push your luck card counting. Uh, you're laying out cards in rows, you're orthogonally adjacent, and you're trying to make connections of trees of the similar color. What's super interesting is that you have to manage both their color and their number. The, the path that you're making has to go in increasing order, and to score the path, you have to have the highest, the, the tallest tree in your hand at the end of the game. So if I'm laying down a path of purples, I need to keep at least one purple in my hand to score for that at the end of the game. So lots of management and watching your opponents, what they're doing. Very nice. And yeah. the designer's actually here signing these copies. Unfortunately, Gen Con's over by the time you watch this. Uh, but he seems like a, a really nice guy. Yeah, he's super kind. Very I cool. keep waving at him from uh, the sales yeah, counter. Just like, <laughs> tired of talking to Jeff. Hey, somebody, actually, she's waving to somebody get me out of here. <laughs> no. So Renegade also now has expanded into role-playing games. Yes. And I know there are a couple that it's in a partnership with Hunter's Books. Mm -hmm. And Ivan and I actually talked about that in uh, an interview on Thursday. Okay. And we're going to talk about, first off, let's talk about Kids on Bikes. And Ivan, as Ivan mentioned, he said, you know, it's a smaller kind of footprint book and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's kind of digest-sized. And this is this is the standard edition, right? This is the deluxe edition. And that's the deluxe edition. The standard is a soft cover. Okay. Um, Are there more pages in the deluxe edition? Yes, the deluxe edition comes with a very cool comic in the very front to set the set the scene the scene, and it also has guest campaigns uh -huh. by different writers. Right. Okay. Right. So there's more content in the deluxe edition, more artwork, um, and it's chunkier. Which is cool because usually a standard edition, deluxe edition, it's usually just, well, one soft cover, the other's a hard cover. Right. There's actually some extra goodies in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, we give you more stuff, nice. more bang for your buck. Then we've got Outbreak Undead, second edition, which I talked about my review of the first edition with Ivan mm -hmm. back in the day. It's like six years ago now, I yeah. think. And one thing that really struck me about this, and maybe you want to page through and show a little bit, I'm going to have B roll, obviously. Uh, is the layout and the graphic design is completely different now. It, it, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an honest reviewer. I thought the first edition was great system, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Just the, the artwork and stuff just didn't, uh, didn't draw me in, didn't care for it. Right. But this 
looks like a beautiful book. This is a fantastic, and the system itself is really good. And mm -hmm. I know they've they've done a little revamp too to even yeah. even smooth it out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. they took all the feedback from the first edition, made this one a little bit better. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a lot bit better. <laughs> It's awesome. You need to have this. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with Outbreak Undead, it's a zombie survival role-playing game. Um, the super interesting part about it is that when you're creating your campaign and your character, you can take a personality test. So when, while you're playing, you have your own stats. Right. So what would I do in this zombie apocalyptic you world? Could, you could play yourself effectively mm -hmm. and in much more depth than normally when somebody says, well, yeah, your strength is four. In real life, give you a four in the game. It's actually, yeah, it's a test that you go through. And mm -hmm. I believe there's also uh, an online element where you could take the test. Yeah, it yeah, used yeah. To be. Yeah, we have that on our website, too. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's really wild. And as I joke around, it's a zombie apocalypse. That means most people die. So the reality is most of us would die. Mm -hmm. But it's very cool. And it's, uh, it's got a, a people who like the whole, like, fallout aspect of, you know, building up their their stronghold and games like that that's all in here you can create your own alexandria if you want <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh no wait that's when they like i've only watched a little bit of walking dead i'm you know i don't edit. handle it I, I don't edit these. oh no. no no it's cool no alexandria is good oh okay alexandria okay, yeah. is a good place <laughs> yeah do that one sanctuary was the bad oh. place <laughs> mm -mm. which the name would have led you to believe it was nice so let's talk about the final game, and this is something that is all you guys, correct? Yeah, this is all in-house. And Overlight. it is Overlight. Yeah. I, I have released some news about it, but I am still fairly ignorant about Overlight. Okay, so this is another RPG. Um, it's set a thousand years into the future, so uh, humanity has been given the keys to reality, and of course... We use it on the one door that we are forbidden to use it on. Because yeah, we're humans. Yeah, like, it's not a surprise. Reality is split into these seven different shards. Each shard has a different race, a different setting, um, and you can play as any of those. You can travel between the shards. None of them know about each other. Their shard is their one world. They have no idea that we used to be part of a single world, and now we're all separated. So what players are are part of the Skyborne Order, um, the Skyborn Order exists in this reality, this combined reality. If you know someone who's incredibly lucky or charming or just like... Uh, it's not me. <laughs> they are in tune with the Overlight, which is up here, right? I'm sort of funny sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, a little bit of Overlight. Skyborn. <laughs> Skyborn and Jason. I would be the NPC that somebody busts out. <laughs> um, you could do that. You could. Um, so they have special powers called Chroma. Um, there's different ones per race. It's, uh, each race is aligned with a virtue. So there's wisdom, there's force, um, compassion. So it's kind of like Green Lantern, the different colors. Yeah. So it does sound like a unique system. Because yeah, first I thought, oh, maybe it's just like a fantasy kind of game. And so as far as the system mechanics, would you call this kind of a... Kind of a system, kind of like a rules light, or is there? A, it's rules light. Because you guys don't strike me as being like, let's make it super crunchy. Right. We want people to have fun. This is a completely story driven. So there's no minis. You're you don't have to have minis to play. Um, oh, I've never played role playing games with minis, and I've been playing them for 40 years. Okay. I think it's a distraction, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's all about the experience with other players and discovering this kaleidoscopic world and the magic it has to offer. Mm -hmm. All right, Danny, so what's cooking on the horizon? Because I know you guys got loads of stuff. <laughs> Probably not a lot you can talk about just yet. Right. So normally what happens is I do an interview with Sarah, and Sarah says, hey, so did you see our announcement from yesterday? And I'm like, gosh, no. What, what's cooking? So what have you guys announced here at the show? Have you seen our announcement from two days ago about no. Power Rangers? No. Okay, so we have I'm a... Too busy. <laughs> This kind we of have stuff. minis right there. We have a Power Rangers miniatures game coming. I got to be honest. I am shy. People must be out to lunch right now because mm -hmm. your booth, the times I've come by, because I always come by and joke around with Sarah a little bit. 
uh, was jam packed. I couldn't yeah. even see what was going on here. Yeah, for sure. We've been really busy, which so is amazing. You could have games that you've had like just huge displays of, and I have not been able to actually visually see that. Well, then I'm glad we got to sit down and cover them right. all. <laughs> Um, but Power Rangers, it's a cooperative miniatures game, yeah. and the miniatures are oversized. So, like, Rangers are two or three inches, however big okay. this is. Some of them are this big. Wow. Um, we haven't announced all of them, but that's coming to Kickstarter on August 14th. So that's yeah. going to actually be a miniature game system, or is it a board game with miniatures? Board, a card-based board game. So there's a board, each person has their own deck, um, miniatures move. So you're a ranger working together with everyone else to stop Rita Repulsa from destroying Angel Grove. Go, go, Power Rangers. Yep. What else got to Was that, was that um, the big, uh, announcement? That is the big thing that we've announced already. We have another announcement happening soon after the show about one of our Essen releases. It'll be next week. I know it. Every At least once a week. It's like, hey, by the way, Jeff, have you heard about this other game? Mm -hmm. Probably. Sweet. <laughs> I have multiple drafts of press releases. Of course. <laughs> Danny, any last words you'd like to share with the audience? Either about uh, what's what's kind of you know what you're excited about from Renegade, or just you know anything. We've talked a lot about all sorts of exciting things, but if you want to learn more and be the first to know, you should follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter. Mm -hmm. And of course, the website is RenegadeGameStudios.com. Mm -hmm. That's it. Danny, thanks for taking some time out. You guys are super busy. It took a while to even get away from the <laughs> register because you were ringing up all, oh, yeah. <laughs> all this goodness. So have a great show. Thank you. <laughs>